Hey everybody and welcome to the Small Groups Testimonies Podcast. My name is Chris and I'm one of the pastors here at Grace and this is a small series where we're just interviewing some of our key ministry leaders and others who are leading small groups uh, and they're sharing their testimonies about the impact that small groups has had in their life. Today we have Alexa Stark on. Hello. She is the director of women's ministry and she's also the key ministry leader for women's small groups. And today we're gonna be asking her the very important question, which we'll start with right now. Okay. What impact has small groups had in your life? Um, That's a good question. I think for me, I think it's always kind of been there because now that I think about it, like my parents were in a small group for a very long time and they would take us to the small group and I just remember they the kids would all be in the basement of whoever's house it was yeah and we would play like video games and all that stuff and then my parents along with the other parents and adults would be upstairs like having their bible study time mm. and then um and then after that when I grew up more um I was in the youth small groups mm. you know small groups on Wednesdays yeah, which we still do. Yes. So if you want to do that, you totally can. Yeah. Um, I did that for my youth time. And then as I got older, I just joined other small groups too, um, different stages of life. Like now, right now, um, my husband and I are in a small group with our friends. So yeah. So it's kind of just always been there. And yeah. so it's, it's just a part of like, I guess it's just a part of life, I guess. That's yeah. the best way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds like small groups has had a formative impact in the way that you um, experience community. Yeah. Because it sounds like, for the most part, community is largely shaped around the small groups that you're interacting with, whether that mm-hmm. was when you were a little kid, the friends that you yeah. had in the basement, yeah. you know, were playing all, all the video games playing all the and video stuff. Games, yeah, right? Like they were all from the small group that your parents mm-hmm. were a part of. And then in, um, you know, youth group, you had your friends that were yeah. there, you know, which obviously is probably a little bit different than your school friends, but oh, still yeah. was like yeah. a large, like Christian community mm-hmm. that you were participating in. And then you also had now in your adulthood, um, a small group that you're a part of, right? which is really cool. And it sounds like um, the pattern and the practice was uh, revealed to you by your parents. Yeah, I would agree with that because I feel like, I, I don't know, like it was always there. It was always something they did. They were yeah. always in a small group from, from as far as I can remember. I don't know if they've always, always been in a small group, but yeah, yeah. for as my memory serves, um, they've been in a small group yeah. and there's been different small groups that they've been a part of. There's ones, um, where like the one I referenced where we were in the basement hanging out. There was ones where they would just go yeah. to when we were older, we didn't have to be in the basement <laughs> anymore. Yeah, yeah. So they would like go into and have like their small groups with over at other people's houses or at our house or yeah. things like that. So yeah, it was always kind of like, yeah, I guess they really did like kind of form the idea that like small groups were something that was important because yeah. it was something that they did and they made sure to do. Yeah. So yeah, I would I would agree with that, yeah. Yeah, not only in that way, but also like they led small groups. They kind of mm-hmm. showed you how to do that, yeah. right? Cause yeah, that's true. Because actually now that I th- my mom was actually my small group leader for youth. And mm. then I think my dad was also a small group leader for my like brother and stuff too, now that I think yeah. about it. So like they led not only just the small groups that I was a part of, but they've led other small groups too. Yeah. That's and we're awesome. a part of them, yeah. Cool. So do you think that had your parents not been so involved in small groups that as an adult you would have looked for it on your own? Or do you think because of their high value prioritization of small groups that that has become like a value within your own life? Or was that formed kind of outside of them? Oh, that's like a, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I think I think I realized it's important sooner because of my parents yeah because I saw them do it Mm -hmm. and it was something that like I knew was important to do like every whatever day insert day we would go to small groups like yeah it was always something that we did unless there was like an extenuating circumstance or something that we couldn't reschedule that had that fell on that day like yeah we went to small groups like Mm. that's what we did and then as I got older I think I realized why it was important Mm. I think Like I realized the importance of community and having like fellow believers around you doing life together and how like that helps you grow more in your faith, in your life and in relationships. And I think it's so important for us to like do life together. I know that kind of sounds weird, but like just like kind of um, 
bear one another's burdens and just listen to each other and be there for each other and just like have that camaraderie that you get from small groups from yeah. that community and I think I would have eventually realized that but I think I realized it sooner because I saw my parents do it and I mm. saw how it was important to them yeah and then I saw it in my own life and realized like oh like finally connecting the dots like yeah. this is like part of the reason why it's important yeah I think it's interesting you know like the the list of uh, almost like the value proposition of small groups is like, yeah. you know, you you have someone that's like alongside with you mm -hmm. and they're alongside you, not only in the good times, but also in the bad times. Oh, yeah. And they're like a true, fr they're basically a true friend, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and they're a true friend that shares your faith. Yes. So it's like all of these things. And I think that, um, you know, reg regardless of whether you grew up with someone who prioritized small groups or didn't, if you're a believer, like a follower of Christ, mm -hmm. then that longing to have that kind of relationship mm -hmm. is going to be just like in your heart. Like, you know, oh, you're yeah. like, I want someone who's my friend. I want someone who bears my burdens. I want someone who's, you know, there in the good times and the bad mm -hmm. times. But then the question of like, okay, but where do I find that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then we could go out on our own trying to look for that kind of thing. But if your parents are the ones who kind of said like, hey, here's where that answer lies, maybe you... You could have gone to go look other places first, but because right. they kind of already laid out the groundwork for you, it was like, oh, okay, if I if this is what I want, this is where I can find it. Yeah, you know? and I, that's so true because, like, I mean, we're relational creatures. Like, that's, like, how yeah. God made us. We're supposed to be in community. Yeah. So we're going to go looking for it one way or another, I think. And I think the best place, one of the best places to find that is small groups because, yeah. like like you said, like, we're it's the same faith. Yeah, we we believe the same thing. We're striving for the same goal, which is to be more like Jesus. Yeah. and that's a hard thing to do because yeah, we're sinful. Like that's just reality. Like, yeah. and it's hard to be perfect when you're not perfect, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. having someone or a group of people who know you and know like and have the same goal as you. Mm. Um, is so important because when it's hard, they yeah. spurn you on. When it's easy or they're right there with you cheering you on. Yeah. Like all of those moments are so important to share. And like they're there in prayer for you. Prayer is so important. And I think that's like a really important part of like small groups too. Because yeah. it's like. Yeah. It's one of our like pillars basically. Yeah. You know, that prayer has to be like a part of your small group, regardless of what kind of small group mm -hmm. you're running. Even if it's like a sports small group or if it's a painting group or anything yeah. like that prayer has to be one of the things that you practice within your group praying for one another right, right? and that's so important because like prayer is just like doing it together and also doing it for others like praying yeah. like you know if, if you heard something that that's going on in their life or even just like you just thought of them in that moment like i think that's really yeah. cool and i think that grows more in small group scenarios not to say it doesn't happen outside of that but i feel like yeah it really it becomes more intimate yes that's the word yeah i was exactly. literally like trying to i was like like putting my fingers together like <laughs> it's like close like, like, like that closeness like, yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> like that no totally and it, and that goes you know for those who don't know that goes beyond just your small group too because for every small group leader who desires to they also have a coach mm -hmm. and that's a part of the system that we have in place basically where your coach is like your encourager yeah. as a small group leader right if you're a small group leader and then they're praying that coach is praying for your small group. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but if your small group leader is filling out their weekly update yeah. forms, <laughs> then that also means that I'm praying for you and that your key ministry leader is mm -hmm. praying for you because there's a tab on there that says, is there anything that you want your key ministry leader or your pastor to be praying for your group about? You mm -hmm. know, So it's like the ministry of small groups is totally covered in prayer. Oh, yeah. You know, And, and it needs to be because mm -hmm. like if... You know, I, I, I love to say that change happens in the context of community. Yeah. You know, but change happens in the context of godly prayer covered community. Yes. Really. Like if I were to like that's super like the dive. That's like whole title. Yeah. Like if I were to super dive into it, you know, it's like that's that's really where it's, you know, so if we want to see things happen, God needs to be invited into yes. those things. Yes. 100%. Know? Um, but uh, so getting into specifically mm -hmm. your role, yes. right? As a key ministry leader yes. of women's small groups. Mm -hmm. What are you most excited about in the context of women's small groups? Like, what do you what do you just love to see? Like, what gets you fired up about women's small groups? I love when women just get to hang out and talk. 
mm. and just like experience like friendship together. Like I, I always try to make sure each of my events has some room for that because we love to talk. I love yeah. to talk and women love to talk. Like it's just, it's how we connect. It's how we, um, get to know each other more. It's how yeah. we feel that closeness with each other is mm. like talking to each other and yeah. just like, that's how we commune in a way, if you will. Mm. So I think for me, I get excited when I see women doing that. And I get excited when women do it with people that they don't necessarily know. You uh, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's like you get to, because like, obviously it's fun to talk to your like best friends or like the people yeah. you know. But I think it's really cool when you step outside of that yeah. and like meet someone new. And yeah. like learn something or learn something new about someone that you thought you like, you know, like that you didn't know before. Yeah. So I think it's really those those opportunities. I really like I love seeing that. Yeah. I love seeing that kind of fellowship. And then yeah. the other thing is I love seeing them grow. And this is the most important thing. I love seeing them grow in their faith, mm. in like the community, in the small groups and stuff. And I love asking them like, oh, what are you studying? Like, how do you like that? Or, you know, yeah, because sometimes like there's different like Bible studies that they pick up. But and it's like, oh, like, what did you think of that one? Yeah. Like, I've heard this about it. Like, you know, but even just like watching like the groups grow yeah. and like grow not only like in size, but most importantly, like in their own like faith, yeah, like in maturity and stuff like that really gets me excited for small groups. Yeah. And that could be said for all small groups, but for me specifically women's. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I mean, yeah. that's your thing. You yeah. know, I mean, that's what I'm the key ministry leader of. So like, yeah. And you're also the, the director yeah, of it. Yeah. A little, and, you little know. bit. <laughs> so. little biased, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. But that's awesome. And, you know, I think, you know, I, I'll, I'll continue to wave that flag of uh, Ariana's small group mm-hmm. where, you know, that's like a multi-generational yeah. small group. And to see more of that, not only in women's ministry, but just like all, all of our small groups where there's young men or young women kind of coming into the fold with older men and women that are able to just share because God just made us this way, right? Where mm-hmm. like young people have like this fiery flame inside of them yeah. where it's like, like energy. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just like everything's new and like want to see like the world change. And then like uh, the older generation has the wisdom and like guidance and like mature yeah. like tender care that's able to kind of like help shape and you know but then also be encouraged by that mm-hmm. flame and like you know there's like all this kind of cool the the way that God has made us as relational beings right is mm-hmm. like to be just intermixed with one another yeah you know in that way and so I you know, I, I would love to see even more of those groups. Kind of I like love those kinds of groups, to yeah. be honest, because like exactly what you said, like the older generation has like wisdom and life experience. Yeah. And then the younger generation has this energy that like I feel like is um, effervescent. It, and, it's, uh, and it's also contagious, too. Like yeah. it just like yeah. you're with a young person. You're like, I wish I had their energy. But then yeah. like in a few minutes, you're like, oh, like this is, you know, fun. Yeah. I'm having like, you know. Yeah. But I also think like with the older generation, too, like it's just so in- it's like so good to talk to them and to like hear from their perspective like yeah. and all the things that they've done and, their and honestly, testimonies yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. and like also to just learn from them because yeah. like they're they probably or may have gone through what you're going through right now yeah. so instead of trying to um I'm figure not saying, yeah, like figure own. it out. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say forge your own path, but that's not the way I meant it. But like, I meant it more like, instead of trying to figure it out on your own, you can listen to someone who's already, already figured done. it out. Yeah. And exactly. then you could take like the, the easier, better course. Cause you already yeah. kind of know, you know? Yeah. Totally. But I also think it's good just because you can learn from both sides. Yeah. Like it's not like a one oh, way, yeah. like we always talk about the older generation being wise and they are, and I think it's so important, but you can learn so much from the younger generation too. Not yeah. just the slang that I have no idea what's happening, but like, I know, I think we've officially lost touch. Yeah. Me not being on social media anymore really makes it hard for me to understand. There's anything. just some words. I'm like, what does that mean? But anyway, the point is, is that you yeah. can learn <laughs> from both ways. Yeah. And I think that's so important because also I think when we think of, generational which is true it's age but also like there's different like maturity in walk too because mm. like you might have just become a christian but you're like 60 or something or yeah. you, you know like and it's so true. you're new in your faith but that yeah. doesn't mean you shouldn't be mentored by someone who's been in their faith and maybe they're 30 but they've been in their faith for like yeah they're 15 younger, years or something yeah they can pour into you still. yeah yeah like they're still um I mean, that's literally me. I'm like 27 and I'm like the pastor yeah. of the church that's median age is 30 years older than I am. <laughs> so. But that's like the beauty of it too. Yeah, Cause like yeah. we can learn from like each other and there's exactly. wisdom, yeah. you know, in both 
areas. It's yeah, because it's God's word, and God's yeah. word is timeless and ageless. Exactly. You know, it's it not biased matter. to a time or an age. Right. You know? Yeah. And it, and that I think just makes community all the sweeter because yeah. it doesn't matter your age. Yeah. And you can learn and grow and like be friends with people that are like different ages than you. Yeah. You That's know. so awesome. Yeah. So then what would you say to someone who might be listening right now and is thinking about joining a small group, but they're just a little hesitant to join? What words of encouragement or direction would you have for them? Do it. <laughs> just do <laughs> just it. Just as simple. Just do just it. Just do it. <laughs> do it. No, yeah. um, no, but really, I would just say do it. But I think um, there's intentionality that has to come into the doing it. Yeah. Like you can do it just to do it, but I think you have to decide that this is something that you actually want to prioritize yeah. that this is something that you should do or want to do however yeah. you want to word that but like you want to commit to it yeah like yeah. there's there's a level of commitment to it that you need to back up your decision to do it and yeah. and that's not to like intimidate the listener or anyone no, to be yeah. like oh like but oh. you're starting a relationship right exactly you know? that's and what so it is you need to you need to be honest about like all right this is going to be maybe not at the beginning, mm-hmm. it could go one of two ways. It could either be kind of hard to find yourself in the mix, you know, right. or the second way is it could be really easy, really awesome, and then you could become infatuated with your group. Yeah. But then it gets a little harder down the road. But the commitment mm-hmm. still has to be there. Yeah, because, like, let, let's be real. Like, you might walk into a group and, you know, maybe they're an established group and yeah. it's a little awkward at first because everyone knows each other and you're, like, yeah. the new kid they on the block. Nicknames. Yeah, they all have nicknames for each <laughs> other and you're, like, why is that person named Cheeto? Like, you don't know <laughs> like you don't know the background or something, but yeah. the beauty of it is if, if it's a group that you want to be a part of and it's a group that fits where you are, yeah. then you can figure out why that nickname is Cheeto and then you can grow and, yeah. like, with these people. Yeah. And then you can come into the, the the group and actually grow these relationships too. Yeah. And then you'll remember fondly when you first awkwardly entered the room and be like, "Wow, I'm so glad like I did that. Like yeah. I I took that that step of faith to yeah. like just walk in and be like, okay, this is I'm going to commit to this. Yeah. And I and I know like commitment can be hard too because like life is so hectic and crazy and busy. But yeah, I think that's where the intentionality comes in too. It's yeah. like we you know pick pick what group it is and if they meet on a certain day then you prioritize that day and that's not to say that things won't come up because like life happens yeah. but it's important to make it your like priority and yeah. I think it's so worth it like having yeah. that community I mean small groups is it's so important because you're doing life together and you're doing you're following God together like it's yeah. a it's like a whole team working together for the same goal yeah so I think that's like so important and so so worth it and it can be intimidating it could be scary um but it's all the sweeter when it works out yeah 100 percent. no 100 percent. so if you're thinking about joining one then make sure you check out our website Mm graceforfamilies.com and go to the small groups tab or even just hit that button that's right on the front page it says join a small group and get plugged into a women's group if you are a woman but if you are not a woman, don't get plugged into a women's group because it's not where you belong. We have men's groups for you, and that's going to be our next episode. Uh, but thank you guys so much for joining us. Alexa, thank you so much Thanks for sharing for your me. heart. Yeah, And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Yeah. Bye. Bye.